Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today, we take a trip into the Parallel Universe Volume 3. Nah, not quite. This is a creation that Paul Waller did in the Fender Custom Shop all the way back in 2012. Take a look at this thing. I saw it on Instagram about like four months ago, and I fell in love with this design. This is what Mr. Waller calls the White Chicken. And oh my goodness, what a perfect name for this monstrosity. So let's dissect this piece by piece to fully understand what he's done here. Firstly, if this design looks familiar, it's because it's borrowed from Gretsch. Now, how can Fender borrow things from Gretsch? They are actually within the same family of brands, so it's okay to do this. There's going to be no legal issues with this at all. But many of these elements are borrowed from the Gretsch White Falcon. However, for my purposes today, since I've actually owned a white penguin before, I'm going to compare it to this, because this was Gretsch's Explorer or Flying V. They didn't make many of these things. You could check out my full review and demo if you want to know more. But it's kind of like a duo jet with white falcon attributes. You get the awesome TV Jones pickups, depending on what year you buy. Most of them are just the single cutaway, again, depending on what year you buy. <laughs> but what makes these things so cool is they're kind of less Paul-like in shape. They've got that arch top to them. They have that really fancy drum shell binding along the edges of them. These are just magnificent looking and sounding guitars. Like they're a little bit garish, don't get me wrong. They're not for everybody. But the clean tones are fantastic out <laughs> of these Gretsch guitars. I was blown away on the one reissue that I had. So after becoming familiar with this model and being a fan of it, I then later found the white chicken. And as you can see in this photo, it borrows like all the design elements. I mean, look at this. It's a Telecaster body, but yet they kind of have that semi-hollow vibe going on. I'm not sure if it's full hollow. I haven't actually owned a white falcon before, which this is more so based off of because it has the F-hole design. But I think it's the F-holes that bring this whole thing together. But you're going to notice, this is not just some crappy telly knockoff that has some of the designs. Because that's something that they've done before. Apparently this guitar belongs to Bono. It's kind of a Gretsch-influenced Telecaster. And even though it still has like the fancy knobs and a very similar looking pick guard, you're going to notice this is a flat top, more like a thin line telly, despite having all the other fancy attributes. It kind of reminds me of more like a thin line Cabernita in a way. But the chicken changes all of that because it significantly alters the design. This is not a flat top. It's actually carved. So it's going to feel more like the actual White Falcon when you play it. It's not just going to be this flat Telecaster. It'll be different. And that makes it significantly harder to build because he actually had to hand sand these tops down. And it's not only just the front that they did in this manner. They were bold enough to also carve the back, but here's where things get really interesting. It's also a set neck. He altered the design of the Telecaster in order to give him a nice flat surface right here to set the neck into the body. Now, I'm a big fan of set neck guitars. There's nothing necessarily wrong with a well-crafted bolt-on neck, but you know, I grew up with guitars that were set necks. That's just built into my brain. So that was really cool for me. And they also carved the back. So it's like such a strange little telly here. But he's loaded it up here with two TV Jones pickups. In this video, he calls it the Powertron pickup. So it's not like the true reissue filter trons. They've got a little bit more oomph to them, apparently. Now, depending on which one you're looking at, some of them have the Bigsby and bridge system, just like the Falcons do. And they seem to utilize the three knobs down here and one up here. It utilizes the exact same type of pick guard that you find on the White Falcons, except for instead of saying Gretsch on the side, it now says Fender. If you really zoom in, it also looks like they took the time to line the F-holes with the golden drum shell binding. So that's just the top of this thing. It's kind of beautiful and awkward. And let's just talk about that name White Chicken here for a moment. You know, the, the White Penguin kind of gets crapped on all the time because it's kind of a pathetic bird to name a guitar after. I personally really like penguins. I think they're cool. I've never understood why people hated it. But I guess, you know, comparing this big majestic falcon to a tiny little arctic bird, I, I understand. I understand. But choosing the name Chicken, it's like, ah, oh, man, it just sounds so pathetic that it makes me love it even more. Because I love company mashups, and I love rooting for the underdogs. Chicken is not a very scary name for this thing, and I love it. 
But moving on to the neck here, apparently it's a slightly shorter scale than a normal Telecaster because, you know, you didn't have a lot of room to work with on this thing. But the original one is actually a reduced 25 inch scale length. So not by much. Most Telecasters are 25 and a half. So you're kind of into PRS territory now. They utilized a modified B6 Bigsby system. And for adorning the fretboard with, you get the beautiful hump block inlays that have these special little designs inside of them. And of course, you'll notice things like all the hardware is correct to a Gretsch. He just, you know, went to Gretsch, stole some of their parts to make this thing. So you get the fancy little strap buttons there. You get the fancy encrusted bejeweled knobs. You get all the drum shell binding, including on the neck. And it looks like we have pretty large fret wire on this thing too. I think the true finishing touches here is having the gold sparkly truss rod cover on this thing, as well as the Fender logo also being done up in that. But you're going to notice there's actually something a little bit more different about this headstock as well. It's tilted back, you know, kind of how like Gibson does theirs, Gretsch does theirs like that too. It's so they don't have to utilize string trees. And he didn't want to use a string tree on this particular model because of the whole Bigsby. He wanted the tuning stability to be as best as it could be. So he didn't do it for tonal reasons. It's just, you know, something else that makes this Fender so interesting and unique. So this whole design, Fender, you need to put this into production if you do a Parallel Universe Volume 3, in my opinion because not everybody can afford a custom shop version of this one, but even if it has to be like $3,000 under the USA moniker, I think people would still buy these things because you can't find them. The original one was made in 2012 and it got a paltry. See what I did there? A paltry 26,000 views on YouTube. For shame, for shame. People just weren't on the internet looking for guitars at that time. And apparently it's just been hung up at the Fender Custom Shop, didn't necessarily get sold. But in doing some more research, there have been others that have shown up, like there's this one. It doesn't actually have the pick guard, but it still has all the other attributes to it. They decided to simplify the knob layout. You no longer have the floating bridge, or at least what looked like a floating bridge. I'm not even sure if this is an actual Fender product right here, because this one looks significantly different, but I love the way that they've made this look like an old broken eggshell. The checking on this is magnificent. It also seems to be slightly less cluttered with this kind of strange looking Bigsby unit on it. And the F-holes definitely appear to be larger. That's not necessarily something I'm in love with. I kind of like the more elegant, smaller ones. And there's been other versions made, like there's this blue one, but it's got more of the dot neck. It looks like it's more of a bolt-on neck style. They, they use different pickups. This one's more of a flat top. But if you're more of like a Gretsch Tennessean fan, or if you just like the whole orange vibe better, they've also done one that looks like this. It's still got the bound F holes, it's just not quite as, you know, in your face with the drum shell binding, it's just regular binding. Personally, I like the white chicken better than the orange chicken, but orange chicken also sounds like a dish at your favorite Chinese restaurant. I would love to see a properly done up green version of the white chicken, because who wouldn't want a, a, a green chicken? <laughs> Now, I'm sure if you really, really, really wanted any of these guitars, you might be able to convince the Fender Custom Shop to build you one. If, if you just go to a Fender authorized custom shop dealer, it would probably be a special order. I would guess between five and a half to six thousand. I'm really not sure. I think you'd have to really want one of these. Now, on the orange chicken, I think it'd be cool if they just did the painted F-hole style, because that's what I always associate with that particular guitar. For today's playing demo, unfortunately, I could not find any legitimate real fenders outside of the orange chicken. So we'll take a look at that one. You can check out the Woodbrass YouTube channel to see the full video. And I also found a parts caster on this guy's YouTube channel that you can check out. He said it cost him roughly a thousand euros to build himself. And I've got to say, that looks pretty good for, you know, just uh, something that he built himself. <laughs> Troglodytes. The only question left, would you rock the Gretsch Fender White Chicken or not?
Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.